Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to yet another video here on Ty Drives. My name is Ty of course behind the camera and this is the 2022 Audi Q5 Sportback in the premium plus trim and it's got some really neat packages and options as you can see by the very fancy wheels and blacked out elements. It's got the black optic sport package and various other things like the warm weather package. So this is a very nicely specced out Q5 Sportback and I'm here to show you all that this car has to offer. So in this video we're going to go over all the features of the exterior. We're then going to pop the hood and see what powers the Q5 and we'll make our way into the interior starting off with the cargo space, the rear seats and then finally moving forward to what the front cabin has to offer. But you're going to want to make sure that you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to strap this GoPro to my head and we're going to give you some first person point of view driving. And before we get started, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Valenti Audi of Watertown, Connecticut for providing this car. We're going to start off the features with what's right up front and that is the headlamps that are full LED. So LED high beams, low beams, uh, daytime running lights, turn signal, everything is LED up here. And that's across the board. So we can also get matrix LED headlights on the Prestige model. Taking a look just below, we have some black optic elements around the grille uh, for the um, sensors for the front assist and um, adaptive cruise control. We also have sensors for parking, so parking sensors. And take a look at that grille, all blacked out, very beautiful. And somehow it's sporty yet elegant at the same time. That's kind of a hard uh, design feature to master. We have the Audi rings front and center, and just below that we have the front parking camera and a little Quattro logo to the other side. Nice large hood kind of slopes off towards the center into the grill. And take a look at these. Now, exclusively offered on the Black Optic Sport package are these 21 inch wheels. Very, very flashy. Um, really stands out in this vehicle. And as you can see, this particular car comes with summer tires. So that's pretty cool. And the tires measure 255 40 up front. All of the cladding is body colored and there's a little bit of black accents towards the bottom and up top when you get to the window surrounds. On the roof we have the panoramic uh, sunroof and the shark fin antenna. And if we turn around to the mirrors, we have blind spot alert on the inside where my finger is and also LED turn signals. We have smart key on all four of the door handles. You just tap this little portion here and it'll lock. And to unlock, you just put your hand behind the handle. And again, that's for all four doors, as you can see. And at this angle back here is really where you could see the sport back shape. Now, very recently we did a video on an Audi SQ5, which was not a sport back. And this is kind of the area where you could see that sport back shape. It's kind of a coupe appearance. But make sure to check my channel uh, to see that SQ5. That was also a very nicely spec'd out vehicle. Back here, wheels and tires are just the same. And we have a pretty large spoiler back here with some extensions to the side, gloss black accenting um, found throughout. We also have a sort of built-in spoiler here, which is a pretty cool appearance with a third wiper up above. Back here, same treatment, full LED, so we have the pretty cool dynamic turn signals, but the brake lights, uh, tail lights, and everything are all LED powered. We have some more black accents going around the bottom of the bumper and also below um, the Audi rings. We also have rear fog lamps back here too, parking sensors, as well as your trunk release and reversing camera. What a great looking SUV this thing is. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. So under the hood is a familiar two liter turbocharged in line four. It produces 261 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. So pretty good power figures from this two liter turbo. And it's also a mild hybrid setup. 
And what that has to do is there's a little bit of a bigger battery in this car that helps with the start-stop technology, so it doesn't always use the starter uh, to turn the car over. And it also keeps your air conditioning and radio and everything going while the engine is turned off at a stoplight, so that's pretty cool. But under here, it's pretty neat and tidy, so there's not a whole lot of um, things going on, just a few reservoirs. We have the oil filler right up uh, front and center, and we also have the oil filter right there. As you can see, this got the rings around the alternator, and that is how you can tell that this vehicle is a mild hybrid. We have two hood latches up top, and down on the bottom, we have the release for the hood right above the Audi rings. Now the deck lid is of course fully powered and taking a look at our storage space, very nice wide opening. Now this is the only really part that the Sportback configuration affects. So you just get a little bit less height in the cargo area. As you can see, it's a little bit more slanted than the regular SUV Q5 or SQ5, but it's still pretty much the same uh, depth and rear, car, um, rear seat room and everything like that. We have a nice cargo shade that we can extend and remove if you'd like. We also have LED illumination, uh, some straps to either side, and some cargo extensions. This car has the all-weather floor mats and trunk liner, which is very nice. Another extension off to this side and LED light. You also have grocery bag hangers and these little pull tabs, so when you pull those, the rear seats will fold. Taking a look underneath the cargo liner, you have cargo tie-downs. And lifting this cover up, you can see you have a spare tire and your battery is back here as well. We have more illumination up top and a couple of buttons to close the trunk. This one is to lock the vehicle and close it. And this one is simply just to close it right on down. Alrighty. Before we get into the features on the inside, I uniquely placed the original window sticker for this car right here. Uh, so this car is gently used, uh, very, very gently used. It's got about 200 miles on it. So it does have the original window sticker and there's a couple things I wanted to point out. So we have the parts content right down here. Uh, we have the fuel economy and crash test ratings, and there's a couple of notable options. So, of course, this is the Premium Plus model. We also have the Black Optic Sport package, which is very nice. The Bang & Olufsen speakers, warm weather package, and a few other accessories that go with this car as well. But, let's get on to the rear seat. Very nice design back here. I like the aluminum inlays. It kind of brightens up the otherwise uh, black interior. We also have cargo, or not cargo, but uh, sunshades uh, back here. And as you saw on the window sticker, we have optional is the 19 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. And for a very reasonable price of $950. We have soft touch. Uh, leatherette on your armrests and pretty much the whole door is a soft to the touch material Now if we option on the warm weather package like this car has we have a much nicer design for the leather uh, With some contrast stitching and the leather is also deviated Headrests look very nice and we can also fold down the seats with this little lever right here We just press that in and they'll fold down. I'm not going to fold them down all the way because they lock into place and it takes two hands to put them back up and I don't have two hands right now. <laughs> Alright, so we can hop in and see how much room there is back here. Now again, really the sport back shape does not hinder uh, headroom, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you want a little bit more style to your Q5, but you also have rear passengers, it's nothing to worry about. 
We have a good couple of inches of legroom back here. I'm about five foot ten, so this seat is adjusted to myself. On the back of the center console, we have a couple of air vents and also a temperature control. It'll pop up on an LCD screen. The only thing I wish this car had was heated rear seats, and you have to step up to the Prestige to get it. It's no longer an option. So that's a little bit of a disappointment there, but uh, there's a lot more things that we could be worried about than just not having heated rear seats. We have two chargers back here with a 12 volt, and you could probably fit a center passenger back here if they're a little bit on the smaller side. We have a pass-through right here, which you can open up like so, so that'll kind of give you a pass-through to the trunk. Then we also have an armrest that folds down with a couple of cup holders. We have grab handles up top and your LED illumination back here. And the sunroof isn't all that big because it has the sport back shape, but it's still a pretty good size. And you can also see the cutouts for the rear passenger's head which makes obviously the headroom a bit better. And at this point, I suppose we can check out the front cabin. Very solid sound to these doors. Oops, just locked it by accident. And the design is very much similar as the rear door, so we still get that nice bright work on the trim, you know, all the soft touch uh, materials, a couple of speakers. We have two-person memory for the driver's seat. We have all of our mirror controls, so they are heated and power folding. And we also have individual trial locks for each rear door, so that's pretty cool. Have a trunk release and a little bit of storage in there. And of course, Bang & Olufsen speakers. We have the nice um, stainless steel tread plate right there with the little S badge. More trim in the air vents and we also get a physical gauge dimmer which it seems in the automotive industry they're getting rid of that at least a physical one so you kind of have to go through a screen to adjust it but this one still has a manual one which is good. Headlight controls, rear fog lights and front fog lights. Then we also have a powered steering rack, so that's good. Or a steering column, I should say. We have pedals down below and the hood release over here. And the warm weather package gives us sort of the comfort seats. Now they are pretty nicely bolstered over the standard seats. The headrests are uh, four-way adjustable, so up, down, in, and out. But very nice shoulder supports, uh, lower side and bottom supports too. You also have the thigh adjustments, which you can reach down and move them in and out. And the seats are, of course, fully powered with four-way lumbar. All right, so let's hop in, check out the rest of the interior. All right, so here's the key that you get with the Q5 and lots of other Audi models. Pretty traditional key fob, got a good bit of style to it, though. You have a lock, unlock, trunk release, panic alarm, and then you also have a couple of buttons, one to this side and one to the other. You pinch those simultaneously and a physical key will slide out in case you need it. This car, of course, has the push button start. And we can start things off with the steering wheel. So completely leather wrapped, very smooth leather. You have some nice... Uh, same color uh, stitching on the inside of the wheel, but very nice design with the bright work and it kind of goes along with the bright work that's on the dashboard and found around uh, around the interior. As far as buttons go, we have all of these to control our virtual cockpit and all of these for sort of uh, mostly media, so Bluetooth telephone, voice commands, skip between your different tracks and up and down for the audio volume. And also your heated steering wheel, which is much appreciated on a 38 degree day like today. We also have paddle shifters on the rear of the steering wheel 
And to the left side, we have a couple of stocks, one for your turn signals, high beams, and also one to turn on and off uh, your lane assist. Then we also have this other lower one for the adaptive cruise control, and one to the right for your wipers. So, virtual cockpit time. I'm going to give you guys a pretty short overview, just so you get the general gist of the virtual cockpit. And again, I'm going to be using all of these buttons on the left of the steering wheel to configure. So at any point, you could press the view button, and you kind of get more contents in the center, and your speedometer and, uh, um, and tachometer get it just a little bit smaller. You can also scroll down within the vehicle information screen to get a real-time and average consumption rating, uh, short and long-term memory, so kind of like your trip A, trip B, uh, energy consumption, and then you also have a driver's assistance screen, which has to do with, you know, traveling distance and your lane assist, and we'll kind of keep that screen up while we're driving so that you can see how the lane assist works. And again, you could press view at any time to sort of shrink or get the menus bigger. Scrolling over, we have the audio screen, and then we also have the uh, telephone screen. This car isn't equipped with the built-in navigation, but you of course have navigation actually through the Apple CarPlay Android Auto. So that's basically it for the screen here. Of course, you can go into different menus like uh, to get a smaller display or just, you know various things like that in a couple of other screens. Taking a look at the upper dash, we have a nice soft of the touch material and a couple of Bang & Olufsen speakers up there. And that brings us down to the main MMI screen. Now, same thing for this. I'm going to get a general overview of this screen, not to take up too much of your time, but just enough to get the general idea of the screen. So this right here is kind of a jumblation of all the vehicle's different apps. Then if you swipe all the way over to the left, we have kind of a jumblation of the radio screen, telephone, and what the navigation is doing if you were to buy it. We have shortcuts to the side for the main menus, and then sort of a swipe down from the top to get your garage door openers, sound settings, and various profile informations. We'll quickly show you the radio screen while your presets or different radio stations will show up in the center. And then we have the different sources, media and phone screen. Then we also have navigation uh, if the car was equipped. And we also have phone apps, which has to do with the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Once you connect your phone, it will show you that. And you just press on the icon and it'll go directly to it. We also have all of our different vehicle settings. So the drive modes, uh, different seat, air conditioning, uh, lighting, and all of that good stuff, all of the settings. And we also have all of the driver's assistance functions, so you can see what um, driver's assistance this car comes with. We also have a favorites menu and then all of your system settings. We have general settings, so we can go through those quick. We also have the sound settings, and it's pretty customizable with this Bang & Olufsen system. So not only do you have the typical treble, ba bass, and things like that, you also can control the subwoofer, the... Uh, surround sound level, a 3D effect, and all, various things like that, so that's pretty awesome. Squirreling over are just a few different um, things, like you could set up different users, so if you and your wife are using the car, you get in, press your name, or if your wife gets into the next day, she could press her name and all of her settings will load up to the system. Below the screen, we have a couple of air vents and the four-way hazards button. Very simple three-zone climate control. Uh, it's not through the screen or anything, which is a good thing. Uh, we actually have physical buttons for the climate control. We have the heated seats and the cooled seats, thanks to the warm weather package. We have um, temperatures to either side. Of course, it's automatic. Your defrosters and AC settings. And we also have sort of like a touch-sensitive uh, control. So if you kind of just rest your hand or finger on these buttons, it'll kind of light up with the different settings. Then you can actually like press them and then it'll move the functions. Down below we have the drive mode select, so we can go and see we have a few different drive modes, so off-road, comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual, and if we go to the individual, we can customize just a few different things. We have buttons to turn on and off your auto start stop, traction control, bring up your parking sensors and camera quick. 
also a lane uh, or a um, hill descent control right there and also just to turn the MMI screen off small storage uh, space right over here with a USB and 12 volt quite a bit of gloss black in this area which I'm not a huge fan of because as you can see this car's only got 200 miles and the fingerprints are starting to arrive but we do have a good amount of the sort of aluminum trim that's uh, sort of fingerprint proof seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission for this car hooked up with the quattro all-wheel drive so we have uh, right down into drive then we could bump it over into a manual mode and we can also bump it down to put the transmission into a sport mode so it'll kind of hold the gears and all the way up is for reverse we have a bunch of different camera views which we could bring up so we have a front angle uh, front wide angle sort of normal front uh, top down rear wide angle rear the front and rear uh, wheels so that's pretty cool and no matter what you have up on the main system you'll always have a top view onto the side and we also have the little p for park with electronic parking brake now for 2022 a lot of these q5s will not come with wireless charging due to the infamous uh global chip shortage so this kind of just becomes a storage tray like it has in the past uh, but however, you know, once this chip shortage stops and we have enough chips to uh, put into these cars, this will become a wireless charging pad. You could flip that back and have a couple of cup holders. And you can also pick up the armrest and see that you have a USB-C uh, charger. Taking a look at the passenger area, they have a little Quattro badge that they can look at. And also a lockable glove box. Pretty good amount of space in there. You have felt lining, card holders, coin holders, point pen holders, all kinds of good stuff in there. And some secret storage up there. We have an auto dimming mirror up here and you could turn on and off if you'd like to with that little central button. Our upper center stack has some lighting controls, sunroof controls and various other things like your SOS and uh, emergency controls. We have tap illumination for the LED lights. And also, your panoramic sunroof has a shade that blocks 100% of the light. And this button controls the shade. And there's also the separate button to control the actual movement of the glass. So you kind of just move it backwards to slide and tilt it up to tilt it. So that's pretty neat. couple of things worth mentioning up here the sun visors have the led lights and a mirror and it also will fold to black sun up here and you also have grab handles for all four passengers at this point i think you get a pretty good overview of the features on this q5 let's get it out on the road and see how it drives all right so q5 sportback time very interested to see how this one will drive with these big 21 inch wheels and summer tires so this will be a pretty interesting drive now we're going to start off in comfort mode uh, and we're going to work our way to dynamic we'll get a good acceleration clip and kind of put it around the corner see what these summer tires are like and then we'll switch it back to comfort because uh, at the end of our test drive, the road gets pretty bumpy and we'll test out the suspension on this vehicle. Uh, but for now, to start us off, we're gonna go to this dead end here and we'll see what the turning circle is like. As you can hear all the rocks kicking up from the road, that means these tires are pretty sticky. Pretty good turning circle there, nothing to complain about. Now we recently did a video on the SQ5 as I mentioned earlier and that is a pretty different car to drive even though it's you know still technically a Q5. Uh, but make sure you guys check out that video too if you're curious. Uh, that was a very nice uh, looking one, it was a silver florette silver on red interior one so that was a very nice car that we saw so once we get it out onto this main road we'll test out how the lane keep assist works and also the road noise and things like that We 
can see how the lane assist works. Um, once it picks up the lanes, uh, it'll actually turn green. So we'll wait till it picks up the lanes here. And then uh, once we you know, start to drift out of the lane, uh, the kind of turn red and then kind of just gent you, gently steer you back into the lane. Uh, now, up at 40 miles an hour or 45, little bit of noise from the tires which are expected because they're you know a grippy large tire uh, but that's just about it you really don't get any wind noise from the mirrors or anything we'll kind of drift into the other lane here and see as you can see it does a very nice job of just gently steering you back into your own lane and it also also picking up this uh, Mitsubishi in front of us uh, for the uh, distance indicator so that's pretty cool we'll shut that off for now so yeah at higher speeds this is extremely stable vehicle uh, I shouldn't really say higher speeds but sort of a you know uh, a two-lane highway speed uh, very stable pretty quiet for the most part and pretty comfortable with suspension so we're gonna turn onto this back road here uh, put it into dynamic and um, we'll just leave it in automatic mode for the transmission and we'll get it up to 25 we'll mash the throttle and see how fast we can get up to 60. wow that was a pretty uh unexpectedly aggressive um acceleration um so that kind of kicked me back a little bit just like boosted up the the turbo and just just went uh so that was pretty impressive um definitely enough power you know 261 horsepower in a sort of uh smaller compact suv is 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 a pretty good power figure uh and, but the torque is the more impressive part uh 273 pound feet of torque uh, and also the dual clutch is just lightning quick too uh, so that that transmission definitely helps out in acceleration and also being pretty smooth uh, not so much off the line uh, sometimes you get a little jitters uh, when you're taking off from a stop sign or, or a stop light uh, but once you get going this dual clutch is very smooth yeah this holds the road very nicely too and that's obviously thanks to the the summer tires that are on this car Pretty surprised to see. I don't think I've ever seen a Q5 with summer tires from the factory at least. So that's pretty neat. Uh, dynamic mode seems to tighten up the steering a bit too. It's not crazy heavy or anything. It's pretty, pretty light still, um, but um, does a good job with uh, giving the steering a little bit of weight. Very curious to see how this takes the uh, kind of twisty turns here. So we'll test that out. So again, large wheels, not a lot of sidewall and summer tires should make for a decently handling car at least. Let's see how it does around this corner. Very minimal body roll. I'm kind of surprised at that. So that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty impressive, honestly. Uh, and we'll jump to comfort mode uh, because there's quite a bit of bumps coming up. Now, obviously, larger wheels means not the uh, best ride. Uh, it still is very comfortable by by uh, every mean uh, but um, just you know if you get a Q5 with the 19 inch wheels it it is noticeably uh, more comfortable in the ride department uh, maybe not so much in the handling department but the definitely the ride quality and everything uh, really the only thing you notice is the bump stiffness uh, that's just a little bit more stiff uh, the ride quality you know going over the roads uh, just without lots of bumps is very very comfortable 
Uh, the seats are also very good in this car. Uh, very comfortable, lots of adjustability with the headrests and the lumbar and the thigh support. So this is definitely be the seat setup that I would get uh, for this car. It's a little bit extra uh, for the warm weather package, but um, uniquely enough in the Q5 Sportback, you automatically get as standard these seats, uh, just the, the cooling um, is the option that, that you're ticking the box for. Um, whereas in the standard Q5, you get sort of a normal seat. It doesn't have lots of um, uh, side support for your bottom, your shoulders, and your mid-back. Does hold the road very nicely, I have to say that. I do have to say that. And it's a it's a very quiet ride too. You know, a lot of times in these sort of sportback SUVs, you lose a lot of rear visibility through the rear. Uh, window through your rearview mirror and it's not so much the case in this car uh, you know like the Alfa Romeo Stelvio the rear visibility isn't all that great uh, but this one is just fine Alrighty, and returning to our sort of uh, filming base here, what are my wrap-up thoughts on the Q5? This particular one is probably the best-looking Q5 that I have seen yet, uh, and I work for an Audi dealer, of course, but um, just a really great styling for this car, and the Sportback look definitely helps it out, uh, and it doesn't really hinder a whole lot of practicality, uh, not enough to that it's worth not buying the vehicle over a uh, standard shape Q5. Uh, but uh, yeah, great amount of technology, uh, lots of style, and a pretty comfortable daily driver. And um, with these sticky tires, you might actually have a little bit of fun with the car uh, going around some corners. But um, I hope you have enjoyed this Q5 just as much as I have. And I also hope you stay with us here at Tide Drives for more videos just like this one.